Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. As you follow the program, you'll realize that we've tried many ways to be able to improve health and happiness and well-being. Today we're going to be talking about an interesting practice that's very new to me. It's known as Vastu. It is an East Indian form of Feng Shui. It's a very powerful way to realign the energy in your environment and also to bring you to the fact that you'll feel happier and less stressed. Today, joining us on the program is someone who works with people who notice a difference in how much lighter they feel immediately after a Vasu session. Similar to the Chinese practice, Vasu predates it by about 1,500 years and is based on the balance of the five elements of earth, water, air, fire, and space. We're going to be finding out more about how this works and how it might be able to be applied to you so that you can improve and have a better sense of well-being. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, a certified Bastu Shastra consultant, Karen Anderson. Karen, how are you doing today? I am well. How are you, Daniel? Well, I would think if you're aligning all those earth energies that you're probably doing fantastic. Well, it does make a big difference. Now, I understand that you not only have uh, a certification in this, but you also bring a certified intuitive coaching uh, and numerology to this whole thing. So you've got a real sense of intuition when you help work with people, don't you? Yes, that's very essential. Now, tell us how this all started for you, how you discovered Bastu. Like I said earlier in the program, I've never heard of anything like this. Well, it grew out of my interest in architecture, beauty, and interior design. I had been a realtor and I didn't enjoy that at all. It was very competitive, and I was missing the sacred aspect that I wanted in people's homes and businesses. So I was interested to Vastu from my doctor, actually. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner. So I began studying with Michael Mastro about Vastu. So I really enjoy it. There's a lot of layers to Vastu, like you were saying. I enjoy talking to people about their lives and what's affecting them in their homes. Now, how do you go about setting this all up? Do you go into a home and just kind of get a feel for the environment and then look around and then from that point on make uh, suggestions on what somebody can do in their home? Well, I talk about the challenges that have affected them since they've been in their home. Sometimes they're relationship challenges, financial, health challenges. And before I even go into their home, I ask for a, a floor plan. So I can see the different directions and which rooms are in the different directions. So that also helps me know what could be going on and where the problems are. Mm -hmm. Now with this, what you really help to do is to recognize how energy is blocked and how you can kind of reverse that so that it flows. Is that true? Correct. Um, We believe that energy flows best in a rectangular structure. So if you can think of a river... As it's flowing, there's sometimes rocks and little eddies where the water gets stuck. And this also happens in our homes and businesses where the energy gets stuck. So one of the things I do is I look and I see which rooms have what we call cuts or extensions. So a cut would be it's not exactly rectangular. So I correct that with an electronic, electronic correction device. There's various different methods that I do that. And then I also make sure that the energy is flowing correctly with yantras. So yantras are visual symbols of a sound or a mantra that helps keep the energy flowing. Now, I also understand that you work with chakras in the home. Is that, does that sound right? Hmm. It was just something I was picking up on your website, and I hadn't seen anything like that before. So I just kind of wondered well, about that. Well, there's different elements in the home. There's um, five different elements in the home, the space element, the earth element, the fire, the air, and the water element, if you'd like, I can go into that. Yes, please. So each direction is associated with one of these five elements, water, fire, earth, air, or space. And the northeast area of the home or business represents spirituality and prosperity. So that element is water. That's where we'd tell somebody to put a water fountain to stimulate the flow of abundance in their life or their business. And then the southeast direction represents health. And that element is fire. So the southeast is where we would typically put electronics. Um, It's a great place for the kitchen. And then the southwest is associated with the energy and support, and the element there is earth. That's 
where you would put some plants. The northwest has to do with your relationships and the quality of your thoughts and emotions. And the element in the northwest is the air element. And then we have the space element, which is in the center of your home. So, of course, we like that area to be very open and welcoming. And that the space element affects success in all areas of your life. Very important not to have clutter there. Have you and seen? we also oh. have these same elements in our bodies, just as they are in the Earth outdoors. So we have the space element, and the way to balance that is by expressing gratitude and thankfulness for the home and the place where we work. So we can sit quietly in meditation to reflect and pray, and of course that's when we're more likely to receive divine guidance. And then we have the earth element also, and that's balanced by placing plants in the southwest air of your home or business. Of course, plants help clean the air. We know that they absorb the toxins that are found inside our buildings. And there's also the fire element. Now, the fire element, when it's out of balance in your body, you're going to develop a fever or, or chills. When the space element isn't balanced, you're going to feel constricted in your mind, whether it's because of limited fear-based thoughts or tension in your body. And when the air element is not in balance in your body, you're going to feel congested and have difficulty breathing, such as when people have allergies or asthma. When the water element isn't balanced, that could be because we're not drinking enough fluid, so we'll feel dehydrated. And then lastly, when the earth element isn't balanced in our body, we're going to feel kind of heavy and sluggish and probably tired and irritable. Now, I understand that you work with this by also aligning it with the planets. Is that true? Um, yes. Okay. Maybe we so can kind of go into that. Examples. <clears throat> so, like I said, each direction in building is associated with particular rooms in a home or business that influence the function and the beneficial aspects of that room. And each direction is associated with a planet. So, the southeast is ruled by the fire element, and the planet that rules the southeast is Venus. The east direction represents wisdom, the north represents wealth and prosperity. And strangely enough, the sun is associated with the east direction, even though technically it's not a planet. The west direction correlates with the planet Saturn. And the west area is important because that has to do with developing and expressing your creativity. And then the south direction is associated with career and work. And the planet in the south is Mars. So, for example, if you had some recognition plaques for your work or your business, those would belong in the south area. That's just a few examples. It's also so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, putting yantras in the areas where those um, planets are. Okay. So each yantra is associated with a different planet. And is this something you're going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> no. This is something I'll do to correct the energy flow in a person's residence or business. It's one of the ways that I correct the energy flow is with the yantras. Okay. Now, as this happens in a person's home, what sort of, uh, I guess, experience do they tend to have initially? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, a friend of mine, I was just telling her about that I was cleaning out my closets toward the end of the year, and I went to see her a few days after that, and she said that I inspired her to clean out her own closet. And she was concerned about the closet that was in her treatment room. So she had cleaned out that closet, and she said she immediately felt an energy shift in her treatment room. Um, I'll give an example of my own home. I had a mirror on the north wall. In Vastu, we believe that mirrors and clocks belong in the north and the east, and I'll explain that later. But I moved my mirror from the north wall to an east wall because I don't have any east wind windows. Very important to have windows in the east to attract the solar energy from the east because that affects our health. So I moved my mirror to the east wall, and I immediately felt the energy moving along my spine. And that's always my indication that I'm doing the right thing. So people actually feel physical uh, things happening as they make these shifts. 
They can. It takes. It can take a few months to see some changes, or it could take up to a year. A lot of it depends on um, the person's mindset. Now, I, I find it interesting, for instance, that you were talking about, you know, mirror placement, for instance, in a room that it should be to the north or to the east. Uh, the other thing that I noticed, too, is the suggestion of in your bedroom that the head of your bed should be facing toward the south mm-hmm. rather than the north. And interestingly enough, uh, in the home I'm in now, I had actually done that. When I first moved in, I was actually sleeping with the head of the bed. It was actually underneath the window, which was facing to the north. Mm -hmm. And I made the shift to where now it's to the south, so you actually face out the window when you wake up, which is to the north. And I noticed that I just began sleeping better. The quality of my dreams were much you know, smoother, a lot of different things. And so you can really see how this actually works as you put it to use. Well, I noticed that too, Daniel, because years ago when I didn't know anything about Vastu, I was in a similar situation, and I had the north wall behind the head of the bed. And I wasn't sleeping well. I was getting up a lot. I had a lot of that mental chatter when you're trying to get to sleep. Right. It's annoying and frustrating. And when I moved a few years later into another place, um, and I learned all about Vastu, I recognized the importance of that. So what happens is when you're sleeping with the north wall behind your head, this disturbs our blood flow and our circulation and our digestion. And this is because our head has positive electrical energy because the blood in our body contains iron, so we're all magnetic, right? Right. And the positive polarity is in our head. So when we sleep with our head to the north, there's positive magnetic energy that comes from the north direction, and it repels the positive electrical energy in our head like a magnet, so it's like two magnets that are repelling against each other, which causes stress while we're sleeping. And this also disrupts the flow of blood and affects our sleep and our health. Hmm. So it's interesting. In India, people are buried with their head to the north. And they do this because they know that it's not life-supporting and causes the body to dehydrate faster. Huh. I would have never thought of something like that after life. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, not every bedroom is configured so that you can put the head of your bed against the south wall. Right. Um, and for your listeners, they can do an experiment similar to what you and I did and just see if they sleep better with, with the south wall behind their head or the north. Um, but in some cases, I ask people to have their bed situated with the head of the wall at the north, but they rearrange their bed differently, so they put the pillows you know, against the north wall and the headboard and everything but they sleep in the opposite direction where their feet were. So they're actually sleeping with the south wall behind them. Now, this is very odd because you're not going to have the headboard behind your head. Right. Um, So not everybody wants to do that. So you can also sleep um, with an east wall behind you or a west wall behind you, but ideally it's the south wall that you'd like behind the head of the bed. Well, it certainly worked for me. Well, I'll tell you, they did a hospital study, and there were 25 patients who slept with their heads against the north wall, and 25 patients with their head against the south wall. And they took measurements of their REM sleep as they were dreaming. And after three days, the patients who had their heads to the north wall recovered less quickly than those that had the south wall behind their heads. Hmm. So it's really interesting because as we talk about this, there are some people out there that would take a look at this. And this goes for Chinese feng shui as well, but they kind of feel like, well, this seems a little crazy here, uh, you know, but when you take a look at the results, and this is what I usually suggest as well, what is the outcome of something like this? Do you see a noticeable difference? Is it measurable? And when you get yes, it's like, well, then how can you point the finger and say, well, this just seems like hokey science to me? Well, of course, it's always helpful to have an open mind so you're receptive to new information. Right, and that's where you put your head to the north. No, it'd be to the south, so you could be receptive to 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 be open to information. Yeah, right? let me. I can explain it in a different way, also. Sure. Um, in Vastu, we have what's called the cosmic forces of nature. So this is about the positive magnetic energy that comes from the north direction, and the solar energy that comes from the east direction as it enters the building. And this is why it's very important to have windows in the north and the east. So the positive magnetic energy from the north supports our left brain analytical thinking. And your alpha brain waves are engaged when you're facing north or east. So the other force of nature comes from the positive solar energy from the east. 
and this supports our right brain creative thinking processes. There was um, actually a double-blind study that was done with 100 children, and they each had similar cues, and they were hooked up to machines that measured their brain waves, and they had 25 children facing the different cardinal directions. And what happened was the children who were facing north and east actually did 20% better on the test. And in Vastu, we explain this because they were using their alpha brain waves, which has to do with your analytical um, thinking skills. And then the children who faced north did better on the math portion of the test. And those who faced east did better on the essay portion of the exam, which would be the creative portion of the exam. So studies have shown that when you face south or west while working, you produce the stressful beta brain waves. And these are the brain waves that reduce your concentration and make you feel tired. You know, thinking about that for some reason, I just have this image of watching, say, a late night talk show. You know, it could be David Letterman or Jay Leno, whatever it may be. But I came to realize that when you watch these shows, they consistently, the guest always sits to the right of the host. Is there a principle that's happening there? Hmm. You don't have to confess I don't watch much TV anymore. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. But <laughs> the, the thing is, is when you think about this, I kept always wondering, why is the guest always sitting to the right of the host? You know, that was really, and it's been going on, well, since talk shows, I guess, have been on television. Once in a great while, you'll see it reversed, where it's to the left. And I think because you get so used to seeing it the other way, it sort of throws an uneasiness into the mm-hmm. whole situation. And so I just wondered if you had any thoughts, for instance, here we are on the phone. I'm actually facing to the south during this interview, and I find that I'm more relaxed as I'm talking with the guests. Uh, but, the, in fact, both times as I went from one home to the next, I was always facing south as I would do interviews and radio stations and so forth. And it's just interesting. I just wonder if there's a, a principle well, remember, that happens there. Well, remember, Steve, when you're facing south mm-hmm. or west, you're going to be engaging the stressful beta brain waves instead of the relaxing, calming alpha brain waves. Oh, okay. Because when you're facing south or west, that's going to reduce your concentration and make you feel tired. For example, I'm actually sta- standing up and I'm facing north. Okay. So what I'd like your listeners so to remember... So I'm spinning my chair around here, folks. I'm going to be moving <laughs> to the north now. We'll see how dynamic this conversation <laughs> gets. So... Your listeners can do an experiment at home, you know, maybe see where their desk is at home or at work. And it's just wonderful to face north when you're doing analytical tasks, you're like you're balancing your checkbook or something. And then face east when you're doing your crea- creative endeavors like your hobbies or artistic things. Now, I was told that, for instance, let's say that you have a home office, that you should always have a, a desk facing toward the door or to where you're actually welcoming somebody who comes through the door. How would you suggest somebody actually really set up uh, an in-home office, for instance? Hmm. Well, of course, I'm going to want them to be facing north or east at their desk. Okay. And I'd like them to have a rectangular desk because the energy flows best and most efficiently in a rectangular space. So, yes, I'd like them to be able to see the door and see who's coming in. Um, in some cases, you can use a mirror like they do in feng shui, so you can see who's coming in. Hmm, fascinating stuff. Now, what about electronics in the home? Especially, you know, everybody seems to, when you go into most living rooms in America, the center focal point always seems to be the television. To me, I just can't have that. You know, I'd rather have <laughs> it kind of out of the way and, you know, kind of maybe even one of those televisions that looks like a, a painting on the wall, for instance. So, the focus isn't on the television when people do come over. It's more the focal attention is on the guests who actually come to the home. Well, you know, I do have a TV. I use it to watch videos and, and do things on the Internet. But what you can do is place a cloth over the TV, like sometimes I have an African cloth that I put over my TV so that the TV actually turns into a piece of art when oh. I'm not using it. And also the TVs, they're best placed in the southeast area because the fire element rules that area. So that's the best place to put the TV. And of course, you know, nowadays the TVs are emitting electromagnetic fields, so that can be harmful to to us if we're exposed to it over a long period of time. And your computer, which is probably at your desk, also emits these electromagnetic frequencies. So there's a lot of things going on when we have electronics in the house. Mm. 
Now I know one of the interesting things too, and I and I so agree with this is uh, for people to have aquariums in their house. They can be small or they can be large. It's up to you. But whenever I have one, I always notice I really almost never watch TV because I'm so busy mm. just sitting there watching the fish. But there's mm. a certain quietness that you and it's like you can hear the fish swimming as you're watching the fish do what they do. And I like to get exotics. Not salt water, but generally fresh water. And, and it's just interesting what a difference that makes when it comes to relaxation. Right, and when it comes to a water fountain or an aquarium, um, it's helpful to have it in the northeast because that has to do with the flow of spirituality and abundance in your life. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the first things I'll tell people is to put the water fountain or the aquarium in the northeast. But I agree with you. I love the sound of water. It just feels so peaceful and relaxing. Mm-hmm. And it's such a difference from the busy, chaotic world that most of us are used to. Now, how about the kitchen? That, you know, to me, is an important area of the home. It's where creativity actually comes, and I'll sometimes go into kitchens and realize, man, you have a lot of stuff here. It seems cluttered. You know, put some of this stuff away or at least make it look artistic in some way. You know, my sister's been um, redesigning her kitchen, and she has an area that's just for all the appliances, and it's put away behind this cabinet so you don't see it, Ah. which is a great idea. And then she has this wonderful um, outlet device that has a vertical system, so you press a button and it just rises up vertically, and then you can plug everything into it, and then it disappears when you don't need it. Wow. Yeah, the kitchen, the best place for the kitchen is the southeast, because, again, the fire element rules that area. And best... When you're preparing food to be facing the east, that's not always possible. Also, when you're eating, it's a great idea to face north or east. So I also look at um, how the dining room is structured and where the table is and tell people where to sit. I do have a story about a kitchen. Um, I did a vasudu for a client of mine for a large home. And the next day after I did the vasudu, I didn't realize this until a few days later when she told me, but... She had a coffee pot and a fountain in the north and the northeast area of her kitchen. And the morning after I did a vasudu of her home, she went to the kitchen, and both the coffee pot and the water fountain had overflowed, and this had never happened before. Wow. So that just can demonstrate what happens when the energy flow is corrected in a, in a home. And it was also an indication that she was going to have an increasing flow of prosperity and abundance. So she's now completed her counseling education, and she just opened her own business. Well, how do you like that? Nothing like an overflowing coffee pot to get you to have your own business. (laughs) certainly gets your attention, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Now, you know, going back to the kitchen, what about, you know, uh, I guess design, for instance, countertops, uh, particular wood, stainless steel, granite? What are your thoughts on something like that? Mm, Well, I'm usually going to go for the green materials first. Okay. And I'm not really a kitchen designer. No, it isn't so much that, but I'm actually talking about the elements that you use in your kitchen. You might think, you know, hey, granite countertops, that looks outstanding, and then maybe a few months down the road you feel miserable and you don't know why. And I'm not picking on granite On the other hand, but... the design of granite, if you choose it, it has kind of a flow to the design. Okay. So that's also symbolic of the energy flow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's something I wouldn't have thought of before. I, I was just kind of wondering, you know, as you decide to decorate your kitchen, if you had suggestions, not mainly from a decorator's point of view, but from an element's point of view. Um, I don't. I just The main thing is about the kitchen is that it should be in the southeast area of the home. Okay. So that's one of the things I'm going to look for. And again, if it isn't, I, I have my devices that I use to correct the energy flow so it keeps moving. Now, how about the positioning of your animals in the home? Is there a specific area they should stay all the time? Well, it's interesting about animals. Now, um, cats love to settle where there's geopathic stress in the home, whereas dogs don't like that. And uh, this kind of, I don't know if you want to talk about geopathic stress or not. Sure, that sounds interesting. Okay, so geopathic stress occurs below the ground on a north-south or an east-west axis. And it's found where there's fault lines, underground utilities like sewer lines, gas pipes, electrical lines, as well as underground streams. 
and the intersection of this geopathic stress can be blocked if it's found in your home or business, which is one of the things that I also do. Typically, it's found near computers, TVs, Wi-Fi devices, or appliances, sometimes in the kitchen where the refrigerator is or the washer dryer. And like I said before, cats love to settle where there's geopathic stress. Dogs do not. So you can just make an informal assessment and see where your cats are hanging out. Sometimes they're by the computer wiring on the floor. <laughs> and, and maybe you might find your cat laying on top of your keyboard. You just never know. <laughs> or the TV. That's usually what they like. Exactly. And that's a fact, too. Or the funny thing is uh, how you always, I, I remember growing up and back in the day when you could actually open the hood to a car and look down and see the road through the engine. So, you know, cats that used to go up underneath cars and sleep by the engine, you're thinking, are you mm -hmm. out of your mind? <laughs> So mm -hmm. I can see where cats love geopathic stress. <laughs> well, yeah, ge and geopathic stress can be harmful. In many European countries, homes are not purchased or built until there's a survey taken to measure the geopathic stress because over a period of time, it can lead to cancer and all sorts of different conditions. Right. Um, there was a study that showed that 85% of patients who died from cancer had experienced regular exposure to geopathic stress. That's, you know, and it makes a lot of sense to me, you know, because there's a lot of bioelectric energy that happens in the human body, and it's a matter of being able to work with the environment that you're in very regularly, whether it's your bedroom or the living room, but you're in your home a lot, to be able to discover, you know, how much is that in your home and to make the decision of how you can change that or maybe move all together. And we often don't recognize it because it's silent. It's not something that we really see. Right. Yeah, I actually wrote a blog post about this on my website in November with a lot of information. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, in Germany, France, and Austria, uh, many doctors routinely hire experts to make sure that their patients' beds are correctly positioned to avoid any geopathic stress. This is all just its so fascinating, and you were just talking about a website with a blog, and what would that be for our listeners? Oh, designedforprosperity.com. Designed for prosperity. Designed. Yeah, designed. For designed for prosperity dot com. I like that. Thank you. Now, speaking of prosperity, there are people, for instance, I had a friend of mine who had what he called a money tree. It was this big leafy plant. And so he talked about as that grew, that meant that his prosperity would grow. And he's doing pretty well, I suppose. What would you say or how would someone address that where they can invite that into their home? Well, I would place the house plants in the southwest because that represents the earth element. So that's one thing I would do. Um, also, it's helpful to have plants that are not pointy, so plants that have rounded leaves. Um, I was in a massage clinic not too long ago, and they had the mother-in-law tongue plants, which are very tall and pointy. And I'm sorry, but that's not very welcoming to people. <laughs> oh, boy. I remember being in a health clinic where uh, it was a place where they had naturopathic doctors, and in the middle of the clinic were, I guess, the reception offices. They actually had a tree, and it wasn't in a pot. It was actually through the floor and actually into the ground, and it, it, the leaves looked like fish, fishtails. Hmm. Mm -hmm. was, it, was it a fishtail palm? I, I believe so. You know, I just looked at that, and I thought, boy, this is not only a, a cool-looking tree, but you just felt sort of alive and happy being in this clinic. Yeah, and you know, going back to our homes, we have a tendency to think that our homes are just places to eat and sleep. But in India, a person's home is believed to be a shrine. So this is another reason why I love Vastu. It, it, it gives people an identification towards seeing their home as a place of spirituality and growth. And speaking of which, anybody who's enjoyed a good Bollywood movie recently, if you take a look at some of the decorations in their home, especially the living room, you see that they literally are shrines. Right, right. Fascinating stuff. You know, this is such an interesting conversation. What would you most like to leave our listeners with when it comes to Vastu? Mm. Well, a lot of people are very stressed when they're sleeping, when they're getting ready to sleep. And one of the reasons is because they're watching TV or they're they're on their computer they on their com on their computers within two hours of going to sleep. So an important thing is to develop a ritual at night that lets your body know that it's time to relax. 
So various different methods. You could have a diffuser with essential oil and diffuse lavender, deep breathing exercises, meditate, read an inspirational book. Because what you put in your head right before sleeping actually goes into your subconscious mind and you process this at night. So what do you want to process in your dreams? This is going to give you a hint as you, to your ideal choice. Wow, it just seems like, boy, there's a little bit to think about here, but it just doesn't seem to be as complicated. It's very simple to do a lot of this. It is simple, but there is a complex science behind it. We just kind of touched on various different aspects today. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious, Karen, if somebody were to contact you, are you able to work with people by phone? Uh, I do what's called a remote uh, do-it-yourself bus do. So they can decrease the cost of my services by doing it that way. So what I do is I just get a floor plan from them, and then I talk with them over the phone as to where to place the different correction devices. So, yes, I can do it over the phone. Okay. But it's always better if you can be there in person. I love that approach, yes. I love that <laughs> That's where the intuitive numerology side of you kicks in, right? <laughs> and it helps develop you know, a relationship much better where you can see and see people. Very good. Well, Karen, we certainly appreciate having you here on the program to help people open up to the possibilities of how they can make changes because it's pretty amazing how you can maybe go and attend a workshop or a weekend retreat, for instance, but then you never see anything really change because you go back to a place that's the same. <laughs> and here mm -hmm. we're suggesting, you know, shift that just a little bit or maybe a lot depending on what you need. And you'd be amazed at how maybe a lot of these weekend retreats you start going to will begin to show results. I do have for your listeners a free guide to seven practical tips for a better night's sleep, and they can request that through my website if they'd like to. And again, that's designedforprosperity.com. Designedforprosperity.com. Karen, thank you so much for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Thank you, Daniel. We want to thank the listeners out there for tuning in, and if you do tune in, as we suggest, I believe you face to the south. So we'll take a look and see how that works for you. You can also visit us at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. Sign up for our free weekly e-news updates. We'll also have a link about Karen's work on Vastu there as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway. <laughs>